Good morning. Welcome to Pathways Podcast. And we are so glad that you're joining us this morning. And we're also glad to be joined by Vicki today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank yes. You. It's good to have you here it's on the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Vicki Hirma. Yes. In case there's anybody out there that doesn't know, you are Pastor Steve's wife. I am. His, yes. his better, can we say better half? Always. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Man, it it is. Uh, it's good to have you here. It's good to hear a different side of uh, the story. We get everything from Steve, but a lot of times we don't get to hear from you. So yeah. we get to hear from you today. And um, you know, my thought is is can you can you just kind of share your story a little bit? Maybe your background uh, of church and even how you met Steve, and maybe what attracted you to Steve, oh, okay. and. Um, And then how you guys got to the point of planting the church, because it wasn't Steve planting the church. It was both of you. Mm -hmm. And it was a commitment you both had to make. And I know from just what Steve shared with us before, he was ready years before you were ready, but Mm -hmm. the timing came through, you know, God working through you and affirming the plant and everything. So I'm going to just let you run with the show. And, okay. and... Wow. That, that's, yeah. a huge, that's a lot. That's years and years. Yes. Yeah, story. Yes. Um, we'll take it all. Okay. Whatever you want to share. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I, I grew up in church as Steve did. Um, my mom took us to church. Um, but also like him, I wasn't submitted to Christ. Mm. Um, so that didn't come until later. Uh, when we lived away from Iowa, um, when we lived in Virginia, um, there was a point where we did start to go to church because we wanted our kids to be raised in church. Mm. Um, so we did do that, but it wasn't, it was just because we felt like we should. Mm. And it wasn't really, we were trying to um, live our lives for Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just, we should do this. Obligation. Right, right. Yeah. And so then when he um, had his his life transformed, and he mm-hmm. gave his life to Christ, and it was real for him. I was actually a little annoyed, mm. <laughs> you know, because here I was the one <coughs> who took the kids to Sunday school a lot yeah. of times by myself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so when he came home and his he was really on fire for the Lord. First of all, I wanted to. I didn't know if it was real mm. and if it would last, and so I was kind of apprehensive that way. Um, and then he was so excited mm-hmm. about it that, you know, he he spent so much time, he he read his Bible and he watched it on TV. And if he wasn't watching it, then he was listening. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just, it really became his whole life. Mm-hmm. And then, um, then he got involved on the sound team at third. And, you know, he was at church all morning. Yeah. You know, he was at every service. And so... You know, for me, I thought, you know, here I am the one who took the kids to Sunday school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now suddenly you're trying to preach to me, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah. And so there was a point where he would actually try to preach to me. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I just said, you know, I'm not your project. Mm-hmm. And at that point, he stepped back and he said, you know, I'm just going to pray. Mm. And so he really... Um, he was really good about not doing that, and he just prayed for me yeah. to come alongside mm-hmm. him. So at that point, ha- had you completely surrendered your life to Christ? No, no, no. We were, um, yeah, we were going to third. He was involved in sound, and I loved what I was seeing in him. You know, he mm-hmm. suddenly um, stopped being the husband who would go out golfing, mm-hmm. you know, mm. all day, and. Um, he suddenly started to do things with us as a family. Mm. And so I loved what I was seeing. And um, yeah, we, at some point we made the change to the front row at church. (laughs) Moved up a little closer. I'm not really sure when that was, but there was just a point where we just, um, we wanted to not be distracted by Mm -hmm. the things in the room and we just wanted to be focused to being Mm -hmm. there. Um, And there was also a time when, so, so, I, and I kind of talked about this at the women's event. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to, <clears throat> so we were in the praying stage. Um, he came home and said, you know, they want me to pray about planting a church. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, 
that was the most insane thing I'd ever heard. <laughs> you know, um, he had started his business. It was hard. Hmm. Um, we, we never had money. Um, it was just, it was hard. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, here we are just getting going here. And now, now you want to change again. Mm-hmm. And that was never even on the radar of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah. Where were you at spiritually at that time um, when he came home and said, they want me to pray about planning a church? Yeah, I wasn't, you know, I still wasn't submitted to the Lord mm-hmm. at, because I just thought it was so insane. Mm-hmm. And um, so my answer was, okay, I'll pray for that mm-hmm. because you've lost your mind. You know, <laughs> I will pray. Did you think there's yeah, no way so ever. I wasn't praying for it, <laughs> but I was, you know, that was my answer. Okay, I'll pray for that. Yeah. And um, and so while we were in the praying stage, we went to the funeral of um, mm-hmm. a woman that had worked for Steve's dad. And I didn't know her well. I knew that she was just wonderful. Every time I saw her, she was just so loving and sweet. And we didn't, you know, and I, and I always kind of thought, wow, she doesn't know me, but she's so sweet. And um, so we went to her funeral and we walked in. And so on the pamphlet at the funeral and on the screen was her favorite verse. And it was Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm. And um, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. <clears throat> and she had had cancer for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And um, just really, and not just um, little sickness, but she was, she, she was um, confined to a wheelchair after a while and <clears throat> and I just that was one of those defining moments in my life mm-hmm. where I thought wow you know here's this woman who's been sick for so long and she believes mm. that God mm-hmm. has good things for her and I was just I was amazed by it and I, I really sat stunned mm. <clears throat> at her funeral mm-hmm. and I just thought wow you know gosh I want to think that God has good things for me mm. mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so um so probably that was in March and then, um, probably about May or June, um, Steve bought me a Bible, an NIV Bible. And, um, I just remember sitting outside after church one day and it was, I was kind of in the point where sitting in church, I just felt like he was talking to me. Mm -hmm. You know, every sermon I felt like he was talking to me. Mm -hmm. I cried Mm -hmm. for most sermons and it just, um, God was speaking to me through his word. <clears throat> and then I started to read it for myself, and I just remember um, it was totally different from ever reading it before. Mm. You know, I had this different understanding of it. <clears throat> and um, and then, I don't know around what time, but somewhere in that time, someone had invited me to a Bible study. And Beth Moore's Bible studies were really big mm. at that time. Mm-hmm. And um, the Bible study was Breaking Free. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I had no idea what it was about. I mean, breaking free, you know, it's obvious now. <clears throat> and if I had known what it was about, I probably wouldn't have gone. Right. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, I thought, okay, yeah, I'll go to that. Mm-hmm. And it changed my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did um, it change your life? <clears throat> um, so I was, as a little girl, I was sexually abused. Um, and then my dad, my parents got divorced when I was in middle school. And so my dad left us. And, um, so I had, you know, the father wound, Mm -hmm. um, being sexually abused, everything that goes along with that. And, um, and I always thought that I couldn't be normal Mm. unless God took those memories away. Mm -hmm. And, um, but instead during that time as well, once I was in breaking free and just learning the truth about how God thought about me, Mm -hmm. um, breaking free from the lies that Mm -hmm. Satan told me about those experiences and learning to know God as a father, Mm -hmm. um, was huge in my life. And so, um, just knowing that he wouldn't leave me like my dad did, um, that he thought I was beautiful. Mm. Um, that I could get my purity back and I could have a normal marriage after being abused. Mm -hmm. Um, So that really started in breaking free. And during that time, um, a woman spoke at third and she gave her story about being abused. Mm -hmm. And 
during the whole thing, I just, I really had to hold myself together because mm. I felt like she was talking to me. Mm. Mm-hmm. And we were struggling in our marriage at, th- at that time because of those things that happened. And so um, I went in for a prayer mm-hmm. with that woman and I, and I spoke to her because, you know, now there's, you hear about that more. Mm-hmm. But this was 20 years ago, mm-hmm. and so it wasn't talked about as much. And just to hear, because all my life I thought I was the only one that mm-hmm. that happened to. Mm. And so to hear um, that that happened to someone else and that she was okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember specifically asking her, um, am I going to think about it again? I said, do you still think about it? Mm-hmm. Because I thought about it every day. And it, it was to a point where it really just... Um, I was struggling, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, I was crying every day mm-hmm. and, um, she said, yes, I do, but not in the same way. Mm. Mm. And so she prayed for me and I had a healing experience in that prayer mm-hmm. session that day. And Can you describe that a little bit more? Was it kind of an immediate? Um, it really kind of was. I remember, <clears throat> um, just crying mm-hmm. out to the Lord. It probably just the most, um, surrendered moment in my life Mm -hmm. um just being able to cry and get that all out and um it was an immediate thing um the room filled with light and Mm -hmm. I felt a love like I've never Mm -hmm. felt and um that stuck with me that feeling stuck with me really I felt like for about a month Mm -hmm. um, I just felt different Mm. and I felt God close to me and um yeah so that was probably my biggest trans transformation Mm -hmm. moment can can I ask you said you said the enemy was speaking lies yeah and and you were believing Mm -hmm. those lies so what what kind of lies were you hearing or Mm -hmm. being in women's ministry what kind of lies is common Mm-hmm. are common for women to hear mm-hmm. that just simply aren't true and that they need to work through and, and find the truth about God in scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, just lies about, you know, it's your fault. Mm-hmm. Um, you're the only one. Um, you know, you're just making you feel alone. Um, uh, isolated. Yeah, yeah. isolated. Um, you know, God can't possibly love you. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're, you always think you can put that in the back of your mind. Yeah. And you can sometimes. Um, but when God wanted to get into my life, he wants to go into all those places. Mm-hmm. And so I, I kind of liken it to when you move into a house. Um, you know, if the previous owner says, hey, you know, there's mice in this closet. So we just close the door and don't use it. <laughs> you know, well... They're still there. They spread. <laughs> they spread yeah. and they get into the rest of your house. Mm-hmm. And that's what was happening for mm-hmm. me. So mm-hmm. it was it was affecting me just every day of my life. Mm-hmm. And so when but when God got a hold of me, he wanted to go into those parts mm-hmm. and show that he was there. Mm-hmm. You know, I was there, it broke my heart that mm-hmm. that happened to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um but I want to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it did change the way I thought about it. Um, it wasn't the thing that that broke me, but God turned it around, and it was the thing that brought me to him. Mm-hmm. And so my prayer um, for most, you know, until I, this was, I was my, in my early 30s then. So my prayer up in that time was, God, take it away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, so if he came to me, and said to me today, do you want me to take it away? Mm-hmm. Then the answer is no, mm. because it's what made me seek him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so um, so then Jeremiah 20, 11, that same verse from the funeral, um, the next verse says, um, when you come to me and seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Mm. And I will release you from all captivity. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I wouldn't, I would never want him to take that away mm-hmm. because um, he has come to me in that mm-hmm. and he has surrounded all those memories mm-hmm. um, with him. Yeah. yeah. And so I think too, I think that just hearing you say that and, and knowing that that's the true f- freedom that we find in Jesus mm-hmm. and that 
really, there's no other way to be able to feel that way and mm-hmm. to make a statement like that other than through Jesus. Right. And so, you know, I think too, for people listening that if there's things that are holding you back and mm-hmm. things that you feel like still have bondage, that you just knowing and hearing that that true freedom comes in Jesus right. and in surrendering to him and letting him heal your heart and through prayer and all of those things and that it can happen, mm-hmm. but there's no other way, right. you know? And so it is finding that freedom in Jesus and bringing it to light. And that's one of the other things too, that, you know, like you had mentioned that years ago, it wasn't necessarily talked about, but today as more people share their testimony. And I feel like too, we have a culture here at the way where people can share their testimony. You can mm-hmm. share your story and, and find that love and acceptance through Christ and through others and know that you're not alone. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's, there's just such hope and freedom in that also. And knowing that when you bring those things to light that you feel like have had a hold on you and that whether it's shame or bondage or whatever it is that that's where part of that freedom comes to Mm -hmm. in Christ. And so, yeah, and you hit a powerful thing. You hit on testimony, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, um, part of the amazing way that God works is, you know, we find healing, we find comfort and then he uses our testimony to minister to others. Mm -hmm. So how long, because you, you you share your story today. You meet with women, mm-hmm. and you know do life with them. How long was it from when you found healing to God was having you, you know, connecting with other people that were struggling with some of the same things you were struggling mm-hmm. with? Yeah. So that that time when I took that Bethmore Bible study, um, that was really huge because she had like a new study coming out all the time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so I took the Breaking Free, and then I took Living Free. And it seemed like the churches in, in town, there was always a different church doing a Bible study. And I didn't care where it was. Mm-hmm. I just knew that I was going to be mm. there. And so um, I just went around to different churches. And, um, you know, I met so many people through that, mm. um, different classes. I was just so hungry to learn the truth. Mm-hmm. And so I signed up for for all kinds of classes, um, different conferences. And one of the things that that's so healing Um, even, and it was after breaking free, it was probably within a year, but I was taking another class and, um, there were four or five of us at a table and in conversation, three of us had all been sexually abused by the same person in our lives. Mm. And so even though then I was he, I had already been healed. Um, it was so powerful I felt like that was a gift from God. Mm. You know, mm. he still keeps telling me, you're not the only yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? And that it's so powerful. The most comforting thing when we ha- are going through something is if someone else says, that happened to me too. Mm-hmm. I've been through that too. I know what that's like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why church is so important. Yeah. Right. You know, that's why classes are so important. Mm-hmm. It's about relationship because the enemy wants us to be alone. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he wants to say, no, you're the only one. Yep. Yeah. And so the more I speak about it, um, the more my shame becomes dignity mm-hmm. and, and it's God working. <clears throat> you know, that's where healing comes yeah. is when yeah. someone realizes, no, I don't have to be crying in the corner every day. Mm-hmm. You know, God has good things for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's been, that's why my heart is for women's ministry um, and to get into the word and learn the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause the power is in the word. Right. 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 And it makes us better in all of our roles, you mm-hmm. know, if I hadn't have had found that healing, I, w- I was struggling as a mom. You know, yeah. if mm-hmm. I'm if I'm crying every day, then I'm not being a good mom to yeah. my children. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not being a good wife. Yeah. And so. Um, well, let's talk about that next, because, you you know, you kind of said that what you were going through and struggling with before you found healing was it was affecting your marriage. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was affecting you as a mom. And right. so so now you find healing and. Then what happens? Yeah. So if I hadn't found that healing, you know, my marriage was struggling. Of course, we can't plant a church together right. if we don't have a good marriage, mm-hmm. if we're not a team, you know. So um, so we were still in that that two years of praying. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I really, 
this is, it's funny now, but at that time, you know, he would still come home and say, hey, you know, they still want me to keep praying. And still at that time, I just couldn't picture it. Mm. You know, I, I was like, who's going to show up for that? You know, I mean, you're going to stop your business and who is going to come? You know, I love listening to you, but who is going to come for that? And so, um, yeah, we we continued to pray and um, we had a he had an interview in Chicago and I was really just kind of appeasing him, you know, going mm-hmm. to that because he still was adamant, you know, they want us to really consider this. Mm-hmm. And so we went to this interview and it was all day. And I had just a small, you know, like 10 minutes, but it was questions for him. And um, what kind of an interview? It was just um, for, I, I guess it was for to be a commission pastor. Oh, okay. You know, if he was qualified to be a pastor. Gotcha. And, um, and some, and I just went to appease him, but and I don't even remember what exactly happened. But on the way home from that interview, we were planting the church, hmm. and um, there was never really a yes, we're planting the church. We, I just knew we were planting a church, hmm. and so that was in um, beginning of December, Christmas Eve. We were sitting at third, and I was really sad. Mm-hmm. because um, I knew it would be the last Christmas mm-hmm. in our church. And we found Jesus in that church. Mm-hmm. Um, our lives changed in that church. And um, we just had great relationships with people. Mm-hmm. And I was sad because I didn't know what was ahead. Mm-hmm. And um, so we went We went home. We were up. You know, our kids were young. We were up late wrapping presents. Mm-hmm. And he turned on <clears throat> a message. It was Rick Warren. And he was preaching on Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, mm. and so while we mm. anyway while we were sitting at church, I just prayed to God. I'm like, God, this is our last time here, mm-hmm. um, and I just want to know we're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And I said, I just need to know we're doing the right thing. And so we were watching the Rick Warren message later that night, and he was preaching on Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, and that was God, mm-hmm. you know, speaking to me through His yeah. Word through the first verse that grabbed me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and from that moment on, I and I said to him, I'm like, okay, we're doing this. Game on. And mm-hmm. um, I never looked back. I never questioned it again. Mm-hmm. I just knew that God, it was what God wanted to do. Yeah. And it was easy. <clears throat> from well, out, right? <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> you know, looking back, it seemed pretty uh, easy, but in the moment, no, probably in the yeah. moment, not so much. It's, yeah. But, yeah, but, but I yeah. love how God met you in that moment oh, and with scripture did. and the scripture that he had used, he had used before it. at the lady's funeral. And that's just, yeah. I just love how God just meets you right in that place mm-hmm. and gives you the affirmation. And I know too that Steve has talked in the past just about the timing of it, mm-hmm. you know, and how, how, how he, he was being asked to prayerfully consider, but, but the timing of you going through the process and then how ultimately that led to God's timing Mm -hmm. when you were both on the same page together and you having that affirmation of this is it, this is the timing, this is what we're supposed to do. And so, yeah, that's that's awesome. I I saw a quote the other day that said, um, if you're committed to God every day in mm-hmm. the day to day, then he will get you where you're supposed right. to be tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, we had, there was just, there was a lot of commitment, um, from the funeral, mm-hmm. you know, to that Christmas Eve, there was a couple of years there of mm-hmm. seeking God, um, seeking the truth in his word. Mm-hmm. And I really feel like he had to, um, deal with me and all my stuff, mm-hmm. everything that was broken in me and wounded and he had to heal it because there was stuff that I needed to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't be focused on me mm-hmm. in the planting of the church. I could be doing what he wanted us to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. that's just who he is. Yep. Yeah. 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 And when you guys planted, you uh, did you did you head up women's ministry right away when the church was planted? Yeah. 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 I think I did. Yeah. 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 I remember. I remember a, a marriage class early on mm-hmm. too. Several different ones, and so. Um, yeah, you guys hit the ground running and talk a little bit about that. What was that transition like coming from your home church and then mm-hmm. planting a church here where you didn't hardly know anybody? Mm-hmm. And yet you guys had some people that came with you, right? As mm-hmm. as support. Um, but what was that like? Like 
was it was it easy knowing? I mean, because we talk about we're all children of God, right? So we're all brothers and sisters. So there's this instant connection. Yet, you know, you still miss your 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 old connections mm-hmm. back home and your old brothers and sisters. So what was that transition like? And um, you know, was it easy? Was it? I mean, was it? loving? Did you feel welcomed? Mm -hmm. Because it was a unique transition too. So when you guys planted the church, um, community reform shut down. Like Trish and I were part of this congregation at the old church. And, you know, we were one of the two thirds vote to shut down and join the way. Mm -hmm. And so here you are bringing in, I don't want to say problems, but you're bringing in people from a different church that are used to a a different style and a different way of running things. And I got to imagine that probably had some tension in it too. But like for you, what was that transition like? You know, I think it was just so covered with God's grace Mm. that, you know, he just, he just gave us this mission Mm -hmm. and he just gave us what we needed. And I think there was maybe some naivety on my part Mm -hmm. um, because I just, yeah, we were just doing it for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, when I think about how it happened, um, and I remember one of the women from um, Community Reform saying, you know, we've been praying about a way to revive Hmm. our church. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then here comes a church called The Way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and, um, that really struck me. and I thought, you know, why I wasn't upset about anyone's hesitancy mm-hmm. from this church um, because I thought, you know, there was a time when I was like, why would anybody want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so. Um, it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't offended by, I, I kind of thought too, why would they? You know, mm-hmm. they don't know us. Right. You know, and so, um, but you could just see how through their prayers, Mm -hmm. um, God changed their hearts Mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And it it was so fun to be a part of it and see them then surrender Mm -hmm. to what God wanted to do. And I think that those were probably the most blessed people, the Mm -hmm. ones who stayed Mm -hmm. and were open, and then they could actually see what God could do. Mm -hmm. Um, could see through the whole process. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Get to walk through all of that, right? Yeah, no, that's awesome. And then we've we've watched your kids grow up in in this church as well, and uh, you know, not to fast forward too far, but now they have families of their own, and it's been so neat. You know, little pickles here, my Jake here, my <laughs> racing him out front in the grass. Um, but you know, to see their faith built, and to see them grow up in the church, and then leading their own families and being. Um, you know, parents le- now leading their own little mm-hmm. children yeah. into the faith. And it's just, it's so neat to see that um, generational effect that saying yes and submitting mm-hmm. has had on a family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They were, they were, um, gosh, they were just troopers through mm-hmm. it all. You know, um, s- there were a lot of Sundays where they would be here for five hours. Yeah. Mm. You know, all morning. And I can't remember, honestly, ever a time where they complained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I, I think of them just observing everything mm-hmm. and how important it is that they... And it's not that it was all easy and it was all, you know, good attitudes all the time. Mm-hmm. But I think, again, it's that commitment, mm-hmm. you know, and, and now they've gotten to see... Um, just a blessing that mm-hmm. comes from the commitment. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And age-wise, they would have witnessed the whole transition right. through you and Steve, Absolutely. right? Then, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Mostly Alexis. You know, I, yeah. I think about, you know, she was old enough to probably um, see just the hard time that I had. Mm-hmm. and um, But to see how God could work, you know, just in our little life mm-hmm. and the effect that that has then. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's quite amazing. You know, I, I think about um, the woman whose funeral it was, mm-hmm. you know, and someday being in heaven mm. and saying to her, you know, your witness was so powerful even mm-hmm. after you were gone. Yeah. And um, that should be our goal. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I think too, I think that that's a good long-term perspective with your kids mm-hmm. because I feel like as a mom, you can feel like in the moment where something is going wrong or you're crying in the middle of the day or mm-hmm. you're, you mm-hmm. know, just whatever it is, something's going wrong. And you, then you have all the thoughts and the lies that come in your head, right. like, I'm going to ruin my children forever mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Right. But then when you get to a point where your kids are older and you can see that your kids have watched you through that whole process mm-hmm. and how God has redeemed it and restored it and worked in your life that I feel like there's this temporary, here's how I felt in the moment, but here's the bigger picture of what God is doing. And I think that in the moment, it's not easy to have an eye on that bigger picture, but sometimes we need to like Mm. in the midst of, because that's kind of too where some of that brokenness comes in that God, when we submit to Christ, that he's going to heal and restore. And that ultimately then when we submit that to him and give that to him, like he, he does heal it and he does restore it. And that's where hopefully too, then our kids and our families and others can see the victory in all of that. Right. So, right. Mm. So <clears throat> the pastor's wife, mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing's <laughs> off limits. Um, no, I'm not. It's not geared towards Steve. Um, what, what would you say? Um, man, it's been 14 years. Is that right? Yeah. For, the years. way has been planted yeah. for 14 years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're in our 14th ministry year. I keep yeah. track because Nick is 14. So <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> that's, that's how perfect. I know. <laughs> so 14 years, what, what has been one of the biggest challenges, uh, being the spouse of the, the lead pastor of the church? Mm-hmm. I think, um, and this was mostly early on, not so much now, just because I, you know, I just because I'm older, really. Um, probably the biggest challenge was not having friends. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we we had our group of friends when we were at third. And unfortunately, a lot of times if you step out to do something for the Lord, um, other people don't know what to do with that. Mm-hmm. Because you tend to compare it to your own life. Sure. And you think, okay... You know, is God calling me to do that? Hmm. And am I just not listening or am I not, you know, worthy or, Mm -hmm. um, and and I think that really sometimes you aren't supposed to be with friends, friends with people for your whole life. They're just there for a season. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I really think God needed us to be focused on him and Mm -hmm. not distracted. Um, yeah, there's, there's just been a lot of lonely moments. Mm. Mm-hmm. That that's that's my biggest. That was my biggest challenge early on. And and you know every time I I would be feel lonely or you know wish I had friends, God would say you know I didn't call you to give mm. you friends. Mm. That's not the point of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a family that we have and we love our church family, but there's just. Um, there's a loneliness sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They say, you know, the higher, the higher you get up in leadership, the smaller your circle mm-hmm. becomes. Yeah. And, um, mm-hmm. how, how important is it then for you and Steve to be there for one another mm-hmm. to support one another? Because, you know, <clears throat> he, he, as the head pastor, um, deals with things and has stress and challenges and he can't just go out and blurt it out to other people mm-hmm. and, you know, vent. So you're like, you're his, probably his processing mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. And so how important is it for you to be a good listener and for opposite too, you know, because mm-hmm. you can't go out and do the same thing either because of your guys' position. And so how important is it in your marriage to be able to have that, um, that um, connection where you can open up and be vulnerable and process openly with one another and help each other through it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah. Yeah, we have to um, be willing to to listen to, to each other and give mm-hmm. grace to each other. Um, hopefully we're not both falling apart at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we have to be aware of, of what spiritual attack is. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the enemy would love for us to be against each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, we, we just have to, we have to be willing to pray for each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to, um, 
we have to treat each other the way we would treat anyone else we would we would be willing to mm-hmm. minister to mm-hmm. um you know we have to we have to be humble mm-hmm. um yeah, we just have to have God be the focus, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, and that's what marriage is, right? It, it's the two of us and God, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, we don't get it right all the time. Right. Not Nobody even does. Close. <laughs> Not right? even close, you right. know, but, I, but we also have to be open yeah. to everyone and be like, you know, we don't have it all together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's what we've learned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And, you know, when we hear you guys talk about each other is you, you know, you each are for each other Always. and you're, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And you love each other. And again, it doesn't mean you always agree. doesn't mean you guys always, you know, do it perfectly. But in the end, it's like, I love her. Mm-hmm. I love him. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm going to support them a- until the day I die, you right. know? Mm-hmm. And so it's a beautiful thing. And we just appreciate you guys setting that example of what marriage is meant to be in this, in this church. So thank you for that. Oh. Yeah. So we talked about the challenges mm-hmm. or the biggest challenge. What's been the biggest blessing in the last? Oh, just, years? um, just our church family, mm-hmm. you know, just, um, when I think back to 14, 15 years ago mm-hmm. and not knowing anyone here and the love that we have, mm-hmm. um, for the people of the way, um, just being, being in the room and seeing God change someone's life, mm-hmm. um, the ripple effect of, you know, j- the men, um, the men as good husbands and fathers, um, the way families have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just very cool to be watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that God has gifted us with, you know, through everything that was hard. Mm-hmm. Um, we wouldn't change anything because we get to see him yeah. and, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's, we can't really fathom it, but sometimes we'll be on our way home from something at church and we'll just think, wow, mm-hmm. you know, that we get to see God work like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but not only do yeah. you, you guys, yeah, you get to watch it, but like you got to be instrumental in having God work through you to provide mm-hmm. the opportunity mm-hmm. for people to hear the word of God, to find healing in women's of it. Like you, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think there's a lesson in this too. Like if God's calling you to mm-hmm. step out and, and, and do something like there's great blessing mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. And so, and it'll look differently than, than how God called you and Steve to plant a church and how mm-hmm. Marcy and Todd or me and Trisha, but like, man, there's such great blessing and allowing God to call you and then stepping into that arena that he's called you into and then watching him work mm-hmm. through it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I read, um, um, a book and I can't think of what it was called, but it was actually by, um, Rick Warren's wife. Hmm. And I read that pretty early on and she had this, she was talking about how, when Jesus fed the 5,000, um, which is with just a couple of loaves of bread and a couple of fish. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, if, if this is what God can do through ordinary things, mm-hmm. think of what he can do through us. Mm-hmm. He can do extraordinary things mm-hmm. with ordinary people. And that was really huge for me as a pastor's wife. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, if I just settle down and I don't try to do the work myself and mm-hmm. I just let God do what he wants to do through me. Mm-hmm. And through my story, um, he can do amazing things. And so I don't think – we really don't think about it as God's doing all of this through us. Mm-hmm. We, we don't We don't think about it like that. We just mostly think about how we're just being – trying to be obedient mm-hmm. and how we get to see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's good. Well, that's good. Do you want – yeah. Talk about breaking free. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're pre recording this, but it's going to go live in January, most likely the Wednesday before your breaking free study is going mm. to start. And so, women's ministry coming up in January. The actually, the daytime class and the evening class are going to offer two different Bible studies. And so, in the morning, we're going to offer Encountering God by Kelly Minter. And then at night, you and your team are 
we're going to be offering Breaking Free by Beth Moore. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, and I know yeah. you've shared, obviously, in your own story how impactful that was mm -hmm. and everything. But yeah, tell us a little bit about the Bible study or women's ministry coming up this, this yeah, so winter this and spring. This is the, I think it's the third time we've done Breaking Free here. Yeah. And um, the first time, gosh, we had a big class. This, the last time we did it, we had 80 women wow. show up for that first yeah. night. Sheesh. Um, so it, it's just a wonderful um, digging deep mm -hmm. into the Word of God. Yeah. Um, you know, some Bible studies are more about just learning the word. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not about me kind mm -hmm. of thing. And breaking free is really about God digging into you. Mm -hmm. so, so it's it's really a good Bible study for um, just letting God dig into you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's like I said, it, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's hard for me to speak about without getting emotional mm -hmm. because um, it actually changed my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so... Yeah. Would yeah, would it, you would you recommend for, for for someone that's maybe at a point of struggling, but also for someone that's been walking with the Lord for a while, but maybe has some things that they don't even know need to be dealt with? Would would you recommend it for just a wide gamut of women, or is it a very specific? You know, group? it's for like I said, it was my first Bible study. I didn't know anything about Bible study. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I've been blessed every time I've done it. You know, mm -hmm. that's what God's word is. Mm -hmm. um, it's always relevant. Yeah. Um, there's always gifts in there yeah. and truths in there to be learned. So it's for anybody. Anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. We're looking forward to it. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be a great study and anxious to see what God does through that. So yeah. I think too, just that, you know, you're exactly right. That piece of how God works in you through a study like that and, you know, different parts of piecing back the pieces of your life and how God wants to bring healing and, and all of that in that. And so I think sometimes that's a piece that we don't go to as often in right. Our our journey with Christ, and so especially that's men, a good, especially men, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but men cannot go to the Breaking Free Bible study. Is it is right? a women's ministry. Okay, study. women's ministry. Yes. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so we're looking forward to that coming up, and it's going to be a good. It'll be good. Good study. So yes, very good. Well, I want to I want to thank you mm -hmm. for uh, being here today for being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And being open and being willing to share your past. My hope is that somebody is listening to this that maybe had the same struggles you did, mm -hmm. right? And thinks that they're the only one or they have shame or, you know, the enemy is trying to isolate them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there's power in community. There's power in getting into God's word. There's power in the breaking free Bible study. So mm -hmm. thank you for just mm -hmm. sharing and being vulnerable and letting other people know that they're, no matter what you've been through, um, God can redeem it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so we appreciate, we appreciate you taking several years to pray mm -hmm. on planting the church and for being Steve's support at home. Um, we know as staff, we can really get to him sometimes. So we're glad he has you <laughs> at home. Um, but no, we just, we just appreciate you. We know it's a joint effort for mm -hmm. you and Steve. And, um, there is a ripple effect and, um, you guys have changed a, a lot of lives by saying yes mm -hmm. and allowing God to work through you mm -hmm. in the community of Newton by planning the church and doing Bible studies and preaching the word. Mm -hmm. So we're just so thankful for you both. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it'll be neat when you get to heaven and someday maybe you'll get to see the ripple effect of all the people's mm -hmm. lives that you got to touch um, by doing what you've done. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Thank and I know yeah. personally from my wife, um, she meets with you. Mm -hmm you know, once a month or so. And, um, I'm just so appreciative. She has you to process things with because she, she comes out of those meetings every time being filled and just <laughs> saying she is so thankful for you and your listening ear and your, your wisdom and your, I'm um, just support of her. So thank you. I walk away from the meetings feeling the same way. Mm. Mm. Well, good. we appreciate you and, um, good. yeah. Do yeah. you have anything you want to leave everybody with or have you said it all? Oh, I've, 
Gosh, I think I've said it all. All right. Many times. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll close this out unless you have something, yeah. Mercy. Yeah. No, I would just say, I would just say thank you. I, yeah. Just kind of to reiterate what Aaron said, but thank you, especially for your faith and obedience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think in those moments where it's that, that step of faith that God's calling you to take and you don't know what the future holds, but you know, God's gotten you to this point and he's going to continue to work. And I think that that's, there's a point where there's a lot of people who don't take that next step. Mm -hmm. It's just too unsure, too unknown, too unpredictable, too whatever, too scary. And they just don't take that next step. And, and I, I just love hearing stories and I love you sharing your testimony about how God worked through that and kind of opened up a whole door and all pe- all these people and you've gotten to be have a front row seat to see how God's working and how God's yeah. working through you and you've what a blessing that that has been for you and for all of us mm-hmm. you know that have experienced the ripple effect of you and Steve and your obedience in planting this church here in Newton and and it's just it's just such a blessing to so many and so I know in that moment it's scary and it's I don't know how this is gonna go but I'm just gonna trust and everything can is going to be totally different and I know that but yet you're willing to sacrifice on one end, not knowing what's coming on the other, Mm -hmm. but then getting to see years later, the blessing in that. And so, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's good. Well, this has been a great interview. Thank you again (laughs) for coming. And so I got to end with this. Like, so before we we started recording, Vicky was like, oh, (laughs) I might need a tissue. And I don't know if you can tell, I'm a little congested. And so I pull I pull a tissue out of my pouch. So disgusting. And she grabs it and she's like, know how gross uh, it was. I, thank you. So then he went and got her I a got box. her a box. That's and good. so And I didn't need them. You didn't need them. Whew, you didn't need them. It was closed there yeah. a couple of times, but yeah. no. But no, thank you so much. Um this has been Really, really good interview and just so blessed to hear your story and and, and how uh, God worked in your life. So um, we hope that you found hope in uh, Vicki's story and we want to encourage you as a woman um, to take part in the Breaking Free Bible Study mm-hmm. and um, we hope to see you again next time on podcast.